All right, hello everybody. Welcome. Just uh, finishing up a few things here. Just need to tag the game. Rusty, how you doing? So it's Rusty says, hello, young man. How you doing, man? Hello there. All right. Looks like we've got some folks coming in. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just uh, just wrapping a few things here in the settings. And here we go. So we got we got zero on YouTube, but we have some people here uh, on Facebook. So uh, we're streaming on both Facebook and YouTube. So just so you know, um, yeah, is that a cargo plane? Absolutely. So let me tell you guys what's going to happen today, because today is a special, special stream. And this is the Antonov An-225, also known as Maria. So for those of you who live under the rock and don't know what this plane is, I'm going to tell you all about it. <laughs> and this is this where this indeed was the largest cargo airplane in the world. And um, ooh, look at that! Someone someone just followed us. So let me tell you a little bit about. So just uh, on YouTube, uh, go go to YouTube slash flight streamer and you'll see me there. <laughs> uh, I don't have the I don't have that command yet, Rusty. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that in. All right, so just to tell you a little bit of the facts about Antonov uh, An-225, it was it was the heaviest fixed-wing aircraft in the world that can carry around 640 tons of cargo. So as you know, it was destroyed uh, roughly a year ago. Uh, it was um, yeah, it was the only one in operation. Unfortunately, it was designed by Antonov Design Bureau in Ukraine in Ukraine uh, within Soviet Union, of course, in in the in the eighties. So in terms of the passenger capacity, it has a, a, a passenger capacity of 70 people. It is designed to, to uh, is designed as a strategic airlift uh, cargo aircraft. So of course, we're going to do some cargo operations today. Uh, and it requires six people to fly. So there's pilot, co-pilot, two flight engineers, navigator, and radio operator. And I'll show you all. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's lots of people, actually. And uh, Maria can fly uh, at a maximum speed of 850 kilometers an hour. It's a lot bigger than Airbus A380 uh, and 747, of course. Follow you on YouTube. Thanks, Rusty. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, so, by the way, on YouTube, you'll you'll see a much better quality stream, just so you know. And the term Maria, uh, uh, the the name is is called Dream. So that's what it's uh, translates to from Ukrainian. And the price of this aircraft is around 250 million dollars. So there you go. There's some facts for you. Okay. <laughs> Let's get this party started. So this is the first flight first of its kind today. Oh my God! Red thank you so much for the for the stars. Oh my goodness! Wow, five hundred stars, man. That's amazing. Thank you so much, man. All right. So what I did is, you guys know that I speak Russian, right? So uh, what I did is, um, yeah, thanks for the stars. So what I did is, I I completely put all of the all of the um, all of the gauges, everything in Russian. So. <laughs> We're gonna, it's gonna be a much more cha bigger challenge for me actually so let's let's take a look so this so what we're gonna do now is uh, uh we're just gonna set it up and and of course we're gonna take a look at oh my god jay thank you so much for the 100 appreciate it man thank you so much appreciate the support guys that's awesome so first let's just explore it real quick so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the cargo and by the way uh we are in ukraine we are in gostomel so hostomel uh, it's the airport, unfortunately, where it was destroyed. So I'm actually parked right here at the exact point where I saw it during my flight to Chernobyl. So if you guys pay attention and you've seen that flight um, of Chernobyl, we were over flying. If you take a look up a little bit, so we were flying at uh, like over there. So we we're just passing by with the Ukrainian blogger. So we actually did see it. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you check the, the flight to Chernobyl, you'll see the Maria parked. So it was actually parked the other way around, actually. Though, so they were loading. So Flight Simulator kind of parks it this way. But it was actually parked this way. It had the cargo doors open, so I was lucky enough to see it. See it there and, you know, and it's a beautiful, beautiful aircraft. And of course, I did the tribute video. You've probably seen it. And, uh, you know, I really hope that, uh, that they're going to rebuild it. And all of the proceeds from sales of this aircraft will actually go towards uh, making the new one so they're planning to make a new one and uh we're gonna pretty much help them so i bought it and we kind of helped you know the <laughs> the the antonov bureau of course uh thanks to microsoft and any builds uh we're helping them to to rebuild it so 
if you guys buy it, you'll help them as well. So appreciate it if you buy this aircraft. Anyways, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a look at what's inside of it. So we are transporting two helicopters. So we're gonna fly from Hostomel and then we're gonna transport these two helicopters to Kiev. Uh, we're actually gonna fly to Chernobyl first. We're gonna explore Chernobyl and then we're gonna fly to Kiev, do some circles around it, and then we're gonna land in uh, in in the um, in Kiev Borispol Airport. All right, so look at that. We're transporting these two beautiful helicopters. So hopefully, they're going to help Ukraine to, uh, you know, to do some humanitarian missions or military missions, whatever that is. So we're just here to fly these uh, these two helicopters here, and this is this is our aircraft. So today, we're going to be figuring it out together. So this is going to be a very interactive stream, and you guys are going to see me struggle because I've never flown this aircraft. I only did a video about it, but I've never actually did cold and dark setup. So we're going to learn it. And this is a very complex aircraft. It takes several people to fly it. So let's get dive, dive straight into it. Okay, so first we're going to need to close the doors. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start closing the doors. And it's going to take a while too, right? So, so look at that. So now, now we've, um, we've initiated the, the door closure. So we're going to watch the, all the actuators kind of close the door. So it's going to take a while. While we do that, we're going to explore the aircraft from the outside. And here you go. Look at that. So now it's... Uh, this the, the gates now uh, closing. So now uh, first this it's this it's this ramp. So ramp's gonna go up, and then there's these hydraulic stands over here that 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 that's, that are gonna go up, and then uh, it's this cover over here that's gonna be our nose that's gonna go down. So I made sure that it's as realistic as possible. So we're gonna fly fly according to hey Patrick, how's it going? So Megan, thank you so much for sharing the stream. I appreciate it. Thanks for the heart. At, uh, Atui, thanks so much for the heart. Andrew, Igor, Igor, how are you doing? And uh, everyone else, Tom, Tom, Artyom, Scott, Scott Joyce, thanks a lot for the like. Scott, uh, King J13 is here as well. Woohoo, look at that. Johnny Rocket, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thanks a lot, by the way, for your support on YouTube. I am starting to grow my YouTube channel. So I would appreciate, guys, if you um, you know subscribe to the channel. I post real-world flying videos there, and I also cross-stream now to both Facebook and YouTube. So if you want to see the ultimate best quality, you should go to YouTube. This plane has its own tag. Yeah, for sure. Look at that. <laughs> Absolutely. So its own tag, and then and then there's some ladders, and then look at that. There's there. It has its own spare landing gear, right? Because look at this. There's so many of them. There's one, two, three, and then four, five. So they have four, five landing gear. Imagine if, if you land and you get stuck. And uh, <laughs> and then what are, what are you gonna do, right? Imagine if you're if you're in the North Pole, or let's say you're in Canada, right? So Canada's not gonna give you tires like that. We don't even have specifications to to support this. So here you go. So uh, I wanted to also tell you guys a little interesting, funny fact. So there's a funny fact that there is an Antonov. I think it's 126. The Russian Antonov, that's slightly, well, actually a lot more smaller than this. It is actually sitting at Pearson right now and it's, uh, <laughs> and it's arrested, so it can't go anywhere. So, so you'll see like in Pearson airport. Yeah, it's the, I was talking with Fader Commenter about this. Yeah, it, it, the, the, this airplane is just incredible. So I'm, I'm so happy that Microsoft and any builds built it for us. So we get to fly it. As I said, unfortunately, it was destroyed in in the attack. So when Russian forces uh, entered Hostomel, which is this airport specifically, so what they did is um, they basically blocked the runway. So this runway right here. So this runway, uh, and then they parachuted down, and then just destroyed everything. So they, they first they bombed the hangar. So unfortunately, these this uh, this. Um, uh, scenery doesn't really represent the all of the landmarks so i hope someone makes it so it was a big hangar where maria was stationed so that it, it was uh, during the attack it was actually in that hangar and then unfortunately it was destroyed so uh, you could google all those terrible pictures um how it looks today but here it is looking nice and beautiful in a simulator it looks incredible and and, and here it is we we <laughs> So this is gonna be a low and slow stream, guys. So if you if you have something to do, yeah, I'm not sure if I if I'll be able to entertain you that quick because we're gonna, we're gonna do some realistic stuff and you're gonna you guys are gonna watch me struggle with this with this startup as well because we need to figure out how to start the engines on this thing. So 
but uh, we got I got a little bit of an overlay like I understand uh, lay of the land in terms of in terms of uh, where things are which panels are what so we're gonna we're gonna figure it out together uh, but to make it harder I did I did it all in Russian so so here we go so now now the the ramp is almost almost done and look how how uh, how heavy that ramp is. Someone from Game Boy Red Stream said that money spent buying this will go towards. Yes, that is correct. Absolutely correct. Uh, it is. It is 100% correct. So they're going to. Uh, <clears throat> they're gonna. They're gonna use that money to build a new one. So if you buy the aircraft today, you're gonna be part of the history of uh, you know of the new one. So. All right, so I've gotten, King says, I've gotten the opportunity to be at the end of the runway when I was deployed and watch this aircraft take off over my head. That is amazing. Wow. Wow, Scott, that's incredible. All right, so here it is. Now the, um, now we have these hydraulic stands over here. They're, they're now going to, uh, they're now gonna, going to be, they're going to go up. I'm not sure why the landing gear is moving. It's not supposed to. Maybe maybe because it is lifted. Actually, yeah, look at that. So it's it it's lifted. It should actually stop now because the all the hydraulic stamps are are no longer uh, no longer on the ground. So I'm not sure why the landing gear is maybe probably a little bug. Apon says hello from Thailand. Awesome. How you see? How you doing, man? All right, so while we wait until until the hydraulics uh, move into its position, let's take a look at the at the plane itself. And I'm gonna quickly just uh, get my specs over here. I think I had the specs somewhere. What the wingspan is, because I didn't memorize that. So let's see. Just looking at the limits and. Yeah, let, let me just let me just take a look at the at the specs. Cuz I'm curious. All right, so capacity 190 tons. Length is 84 meters. That's uh, 275, so it's pretty long. And then we've got wingspan of 88 meters. So we've got uh, 275 feet of wings. And then height is 18 meters. That's a lot. And then that's 60 60 feet of length. And then aspect ratio is 8.6, and then empty, empty weight is 285 tons. So it weights 285 tons, so without fuel and, and payload. So that's, that, is, that is crazy, okay? <laughs> that's a zero fuel weight. So it's powered by these uh, six engines. So these are, these are the Ukrainian engines. And by the way, when this airplane was destroyed, uh, the, some of the engines were intact, so I hope they're going to be they're gonna be recycled. So let's just take a look at how these end while well, while we wait uh, for the for the nose to come come down, we'll we'll take a look at the engines uh, in a, in a detail in a greater detail. Because you, you know you know I can read Russian, so I'll read it for you. <laughs> it's probably par partially Ukrainian. So yeah, this, this is called mot motor sich uh, sich, and that's the that's the Ukrainian um, Ukrainian uh, engine. So okay. So it says, внимание, держите безопасное расстояние от опасной зоны при рулении на земле в режиме прямой тяги. Yeah, well, there's the English translation at the, at the bottom, of course. Бортовые клапаны, надув гидросистема номер один, воздух давления 3, 5, 10, нагитание гидросистема номер один. Yeah, see, I can read Russian fast. I can still read it. I, I, <laughs> that's hilarious, because uh, I left Russia in 97. But I can still read Russian very fast. Okay, so here is the... Here's the here's the turbine itself, the blades, looking really good. And I love the detail. The detail is just so incredible. The Eni builds done a really good job. Oh my God, Conan, thank you so much. <laughs> oh man, Conan says need to make up for not being here for. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thanks a lot. I hope everything's well, man. I haven't seen you in a while, so I hope you're doing great. And I hope you enjoyed this special stream. You came in at the special stream. Yeah, the most expensive part of any aircraft is engines. Good that they can be salvaged. Oh, of course. So, yeah, typical, uh, typical thing for Soviet Union era airplanes is that this red tip on the wing, wing tips. So it's very typical. But take a look at this, uh, this main landing gear carriage. This is insane. Look at this. 
Oh my god, there's one, two, three, six, seven. So 14 wheels on each side. So that makes it makes it what? Like 28 wheels just, just for the main carriage. This is intense. Patrick's is number one. Oh my god! Patrick with five, another five hundred. Oh, you guys are so generous for the stars. Number one toilet. Yes, <laughs> toilet time. Yeah, thirty-two tires in, in in total. That is crazy. That is just insane. Thanks, King. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. You'll be my co-pilot today. And look at this. Look at look how beautiful this looks. Oh my God. It is just insanely beautiful. And yeah, look at that that rubber. So much rubber. This is the the art of engineering, and and it was the Ukrainian pride, you know. And and too bad that too bad that it got it got destroyed, unfortunately. So what we're carrying we're carrying two helicopters. So today we're gonna fly to we're in Hostomel right now. We're gonna fly to um, to Chernobyl first. So we're gonna do some tour there, and then we're gonna fly to Kiev and probably land there and deliver those helicopters. So you can see that the cargo. Let's just peek inside a little bit so you can see what the cargo is. So we're carrying these two helicopters over here. Yeah, it's a little. It gets quiet all of a sudden. Yeah, because we just we just kind of morphed into the model. And here we go. Look at that. It's lots of spare parts, lots of uh, spare uh, spare um, wheels, and we're just just still waiting for the hydraulics to to finish. Okay, let me just take a look uh, here. I'm just gonna take <laughs> take a look at the at the EFB. What's going on? Okay, so main door, yeah, it's still closing. So we're just looking at the Neil now. Neil is the status of it. Yeah, th so there you go. So you can see the status. So Neil needs to needs to come come all the way up, and then we're gonna have the door and legs come down. So we just have to wait for that. Randy says, "What's up, Captain?" All right, so yeah, we're flying once again. Uh, for those of you who just joined, we're flying the Antonov An two twenty five Maria. Uh, also known as Dream, that's what it stands for Ukrainian. The Ukrainian aircraft that was unfortunately destroyed by Russian forces, the Putin forces, and and this is this livery is is so cool. So it actually says, "Be brave like Ukraine." So if if you take a look here, there you go. It says, "Be brave like Ukraine." And now we're gonna we're gonna see the nose come down. So here it is, international cargo transponder, and there's uh, there's the uh, there's the phone numbers for for the main office, and of course the uh, the email. And here we go. Look at that. There's the there's the legs coming up, and this is so awesome. They they did they did it so realistically. That that's amazing. So now that the legs gonna come up, we're gonna see the nose come down. So here comes the nose, and nose gonna come down. So as the nose come down. Are we leaving yet? Oh, Randy, I don't think we're leaving yet. It's gonna take us a while. We have to. We have to. So we have to. Yeah, the fax number. Yeah, you can fax it. <laughs> that is so, so like, so Ukrainian. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, you can fax them. There, you guys should copy the number. You should fax them. Say, you know, Ukraine forever, or something like that. You just fax them there. <laughs> so, so yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Give them some encouragement. Uh, they actually have a really. Um, uh, good uh, social media page and and uh, they're awesome. They 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 fully supported this. So so basically, uh, oh hey Alex, oh look at that, we have a seven thirty seven captain today. Look at that, Alex Konstantinovsky. He's from Ukraine, and he's seen Maria so many times. And look at that, dostup kabino tolka sprava. So this says that the uh, access to the cabin is only on the right side, and then rescue uh, right side only. Yeah. So beautiful model. It's it is super super detailed. You can see all the decals, and they're just so nicely done. <laughs> Isn't it something like ten minutes in real life? That's exactly how it's like. That's it. So for those of you guys that that have plans today, I sorry, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to rewatch the stream and, and fast forward these moments because we're gonna have to wait until the nose comes down. As we talk about this, because <laughs> it's gonna take a while. I when I was setting up the stream, I put I put the nose up and I had to wait until until it, it fully comes up, so that I could I could set it up. <laughs> so here it is. 
Yeah, awesome. So while we while the nose is coming down, what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna show you the route. So Alex actually helped me out a little bit uh, a while back uh, on the routes when we did the Kiev tour. So we're gonna do a quick tour again. So over here we are in Hostomel. Right here, so this is the home base for Antonov. So Antonov 2 International, that's UKKM. So Uniform, uniform Kilo Kilo Mike. And uh, as you can see, there's the <clears throat> city of Bucha over here. So so the unf where the unfortunate events have happened, as you can see, the airport is very close to Bucha city. And uh, when we flew to Chernobyl on that Cessna, we actually flew along the river here and then we flew here and then we flew back and this is where we saw the the Antonov the Maria Alex there so you can see it, to you see it in the oh my god Alex thank you so much appreciate it thank you so much for the for the <laughs> for the sport appreciate it uh you know what uh all the, actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna send all of the stars today to to Ukrainian charity so you, whatever you send we'll just send it to the charity and I'll 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 I'm not gonna take any stars for today's stream because I, I don't think it's fair so today is all about Ukraine and, and we're going to help them out as much as we can. Um, all right. So as you can see, the airport is closed. So you can now see that it's closed. So what we're going to do is we're going to push back from here and then um, turn on the engines. So you can see this hangar. By the, by the way, this is where Maria usually stationed. So this hangar was the one that was destroyed uh, as well as this one too. And what's interesting is that uh, there's also a whole bunch of uh, Antonov aircraft over here that are parked. A, a lot of them are, are are not flyable anymore, so they're more like the museum uh, items. And this is the this is the Antonov kind of headquarters. I think that's the building. There's there there is a building there. So okay, so there's Idalna that looks like a restaurant. Uh, this looks like a um, little power unit power plant. Yeah, it looks like this is more for fuel storage. So that's that that's accounting. Woohoo, like to look at that. Joel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Alright, so uh just quickly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly to Chernobyl. So we're gonna fly to Chernobyl, fly around Chernobyl in Maria, and then uh we're gonna go back and, and do the, the Kiev tour real quick. Alright, look at that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh one second, let me just see. I didn't, I didn't see the message. Alright, there, there's N22 there. Yeah, exactly, Patrick. Exactly, and Alex, thank you so much, and, and Patrick, thank you so much for the stars. So, so as I said, all the stars, I'll just uh, will donate them to charity today. All right, so uh, the Chernobyl, and then we're gonna fly to Kiev over here, and then we're gonna land in Burispol. So, I don't know how to fly ILS on this plane, so we're gonna we're gonna have to do a visual. So we'll probably do a visual on the runway three six left, uh, and we're gonna try to land it. So please forgive me if I'm gonna be bad at this because I've never flown this aircraft. And this is going to be exciting. All right, so let's hop into the cabin and let's take a look. So here it is. Uh, the, so the EFB. So right now we have um, uh, we have the we have the button. So if you if you just buy this aircraft, oh my god, Brett, since my full donation is going to Ukraine, here's oh my god, oh thank you so much. Thanks so much for the 1,000. Wow, that's awesome. Is going to Ukraine, Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. All right, amazing! Thank you so much for for the donation. Appreciate it. All right, and um, after the stream, we'll we'll count the stars, and I'll I'll send you guys a screen, uh, and we'll probably send it to um, I think probably Razum. We'll see which which fund is the best, and then I'll let you know. All right, so here's the dashboard. So we're gonna so there's the we can load plan from GPS. So basically, I think the main navigation is the GNS over here. So that's what they use for the main navigation. Uh, that's where you, you put your approach, right? Because there is no AFB. And and what I did also, just to make it e even more fun, so there's in options, you could you could say uh, the cockpit language is in English or Cyrillic. So I did it in Cyrillic. And we're going to do metric as well, uh, just to make it the ultimate realism. And of course, you could flip it to English. So if you're, if you're of course, don't understand Russian, so now um, you could see that it, it, it all of the... Uh, all of the labels are, are in indeed in English. The ones that are are, are actually clickable, uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to switch it back to Russian. Then you're going to see me struggle. So if in any case, it, in case I fail today by from starting, we always have this green button. So we're still going to fly no matter what. So in terms of the ground, uh, so we're going to remove the chocks and so we're going to keep the GPU for now. 
and uh, we're going to turn off the lights over here. So in terms of the payload, so we applied the payload and uh, we can always configure the cargo. We can, we can uh, transport, whether that's a boiler or you could put a generic cargo or you could put a truck or a fire truck or a, a maglev train, which is the magnetic levitation train. Uh, well, we're transporting helicopters to help Ukraine with, with the war. So, so there it is. Uh, once again, thanks, uh, thanks for the stars. All right, uh, so here's the payload. So I think we're 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 good in terms of the weights, and uh, we could do we could we could also load up the the rear or uh, or front passengers. So I think we can do 22 in the, in the rear and forward. We could put 16 people. Okay, so weather. Uh, this is just uh, iCow. So we're gonna we're gonna actually look into and see if if our weather is 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 correct. Um, Actually, I don't think I don't think the Ukraine might not be reporting any weather. So let's let's try. Let's try and see if uh, if it if it's gonna give us a meter. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's just it it's actually that actually does look realistic somewhat, right? So ten thirteen HPA. Yeah, that that's fine. Okay, so we have some unit conversions that you could see, and uh, you could convert feet to meters, meters to feet. Uh, kilograms to pounds, uh, knots to kilometers an hour, miles an hour, and of course pressure conversion. In in North America, we use inches of of mercury, but in uh, uh, in 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 Europe, uh, in and in Ukraine, they use uh, millimeters of uh, uh, of mercury or or the hectopascals. And I think the MMHD is pretty much the same. So let's say if we do two nine or nine or two. So that's uh, actually no, that's not the same. <laughs> so ten thirteen hectopascals, yes, and then seven five five nine decimal line seven millimeters of mercury. All right. Oh my God, he's about to fly. Treasure corals, how's it going? Treasure corals, how you doing, man? Thank you so much for tuning in. By the way, just so you know, we are flying the the Maria uh, aircraft. And uh, one second, I think aircraft control disabled when inputting text. Okay. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. So just so you know, we are flying this beautiful aircraft for those of you guys to join. And uh, we're not about to fly. We're, we're about to uh, we're about to start this thing because I I don't know how to fly it. It's just got released. It's the it's the uh, <laughs> Ukrainian plane. OK, so I do have a checklist here. Um, and so we're, we're done with the with the EFB. So over here we have the main main panel. So. Uh, this is this is sort of like an MCP. This is the engine panel. So of course we have our throttles, right? So our um, so we've got our spoilers. Then we have our our flaps. So very similar. So with one big difference. So in this case, in the overhead panel, we have the radio panels here, and then we have the light systems. So so here's the here's the lights lighting systems. And then we have oh my god, <laughs> oh yeah yeah okay. So this is this is the uh, window heating system. This is the um, oh my. There's all these acronyms that I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> so this is gonna be crazy. This is gonna be so hilarious. But yeah, so this uh, these are the um, these are all of the all of the lights, right? So so we have the uh, the actual landing lights. Then we have the the, I think these ones specifically are for uh, nose lights, and then we have the beacon, and then and then this is the, the these are the lights for the wings. And then we have the yeah, that's that's just an indicator. So this this is going to be our light indicator for any any of the problems, and then and then this is the lights for so that's the electrical electrical system, and then. So TCAS, yeah. So that, that that's pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take you an hour exactly. So everything is in it's in it's in Russian actually. So uh, very similar to Ukrainian. So here it is. So here here's the cool part. This is an engineering panel right here. This is electrical panel, <laughs> right? And this is navigational panel. So this is for navigation. So now we're gonna we're gonna be like. Freak it out, uh, hey Alex. Yeah, you should go to YouTube because you'll see you'll see it better. So YouTube's gotta. Okay, let's let's roam around the cabin real quick. Okay, so there's there's some uh, some interesting uh, 
some interesting rooms here. So you could you could kind of sit sit here as a passenger. So I guess this is all for the crew. Uh, I don't, don't understand why they don't have any windows. So I guess if you're flying uh, as a maintenance engineer, you're, you're going to have to just chill and read a book or something. Because Okay, so th this jump seat actually has a, a little small window that you can look out. So it's, since it's a cargo plane, you know, it's uh, it's going to be tricky. All right, so let's let's figure this out. Okay, so I think first is we're going to do the electrical panel, right? So let's let's uh, tr first turn on the batteries. Okay, so this is engines, and then we have the temperature, and then what else do we have? Okay, so that's the... So this is the engine start one. Okay. And this is the electrical. So let's let's first figure out how to turn on the batteries. So okay, so this is so that's that's APU. So APU is good. And then we have the Okay, there's the voltmeters. I'm just trying trying to understand where it is. Okay, so that's the lights light systems. And then Okay, and so these are circuit breakers. Oh geez. I might gonna have to we'll see we'll see if I'll figure it out. If I if I want, I'll just I'll just turn on the cheat. But uh, but so far I just want to take a look at uh what's here. Okay. And that's the that's the fuel system. So now we need to figure out where the batteries are. Okay, so where to turn on the batteries. Let me take a look. So I'm I'm just kind of looking at the manual as well. So, and that's awesome that they've uh, they've simulated everything. So let's take a look. Uh, there is the just looking at where the where the electrical is, where the batteries, the engine panel, hydraulics, and then electrical FO side. Okay, so let's see. So these are the buses, but most likely we're just going to turn them off for now. Okay. Wow, this is this is freaking crazy. <laughs> where's the where's the batteries? What the hell is going on? <laughs> okay, so двигатели, управление, радио, освещение. Okay, so this should be here. So probably Alex should, should help me out. Just pressing buttons, it will turn on eventually. No, 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 no. We need to. We need to. to okay, so this is APU. So I know, I know that this is APU control. And then, okay, so this is this is to check the to check the voltage. Then we have the. Okay, oxygen. Oh my, this is the this is this is nuts. <laughs> so I'm gonna first see which switches are operational because not all of them are operational. Okay, board CT, out generator so okay, so that's not it. And geez, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to make a video on this la later. But so based on the checklist, we're doing the batteries on first. Let's see. Battery one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's five batteries. Just so so this means we need to take a look at the five switches. So would this be it? No, that, that's not it. Um so let's look at the panel where it's where it's got five switches. So not it. So okay, that's not it either. So this is old reserve landing gear, so that's the that's the starters. Okay, and then we have the this is the fuel system, so that's not it. So this is this is the fuel pumps. Okay, that's hydraulics, and then this. Yeah, it looks like okay. There looks like okay. There's six switches. So that's not it. OK, 
Okay. <laughs> you guys know where the batteries are. Oh, that's gonna be the that's gonna be my um my quote for today. Do you guys know where the batteries are at? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, now I now I really now I really like what the hell did I just get myself into? This is nuts. So this is electrical panel. Where the hell is the battery switches? Okay, auto opposition. External power if selected. Okay, so let's let's power it by external power. But it it should be probably on. But let's see. That that's not external power. Okay. Oh jeez. Two, three, one, two. Okay. okay, there they are. Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, so they they're here. So these are the batteries. So one, two, three, four. But they should should have five. So okay, so batteries are on. <laughs> we got the batteries. We got the power. Oh my god. We got the power. Okay. External power is if selected is on. So this one is good. Okay, so we got these buses are on. Perfect. And then these buses are on. Okay, so it says uh, masla. Uh, that means there's no oil pressure. That's fine. Okay, so APU 1 and 2 starts uh, down. Okay, so one, APU 1 and 2 starts so that we have P 1 and 2. I think we're starting that. Okay, so there it is. And fuel heater if selected on. So APU heater. You master switch. Let's take a look. Uh, so this this is the APU start and APU heater and master switch. This should be on because uh, some of the buttons are not really supposed to supposed to work. So let's just double check. Which of the selectors we can do? Yeah, okay, let's do it. Okay, so we got the... Okay. So, Varina, Shina, that's the... This is the emergency one. So, we have the... the All four buses are powering up. Okay, that's good. Repeat to same procedure above. You bleed. Okay. Okay, so at least we got the batteries on. I think we're starting the APU. So, let's take a look and see if the APU is, is starting. I'm not, not sure if APU is running. But anyways, oh my God! See, it, it takes it takes like six. Okay, so on the on the very top, there's source of power buttons. Okay. No, but this so these are these are the um, these are the circuit breakers. By the way, Alex, you should you should uh, get it. Okay, so like say you need to find batteries before you plug them in. Yeah, exactly. Is this the video tutorial? That's not. That's actually. So just to just to this is the this is the stream of me trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. So if we're not going to be able to start it, uh, I'll need to make a tutorial afterwards because I, I did not uh, read the documentation thoroughly. So, and I didn't find it yet. So this is just us kind of, you know, doing stuff and just trying to trying to uh, trying to see. I'm going to make a tutorial afterwards once I, f I completely figure it out. But this is the this is us uh, trying to see what uh, how to do this. Okay. So I think got so So this should theoretically start the APU. Now let me see if if uh if we got the APU RPMs. So let's see. Alright, so these are these are the engines. And then so all six engines are off for now. And so I'm not sure where the APU indication is, if APU is running or not. Is where it, I guess that's the APU heater. Uh, if anything, we can just we can just press the cheat button. Let me know, guys, if you're if you're put gears up while in park. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. I see. That's the. Okay. Perfect. So that makes sense.
Пилоти, КПУ, напряжение в ВУ. So yeah, the the battery that's the battery voltage, and I think this is this is the APU APU one. But for some reason, these these are. Be perfect. So the fourth one is is off for some reason. We'll see what that. Yeah, no, try to figure it out. Okay, let's. Okay, if you want it, if you want me to, <laughs> yeah, let's figure it out. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So na board. Okay, so this is this is the uh, this is the external power. So reserve питание. Okay, that's good. And okay, okay, I think we're good with APU. I think APU bleed. So I think APU bleed should be in it should be in the electrical panel, right? So it should be in it should be in the electrical panel, but that's okay. The rectifier that's one, two, three, four, that's good. And then transformer rectifier on. So that's the that's the transformer rectifier and that's the that's the regular rectifier looks like. Okay, perfect. Oh my, I didn't know it's gonna be that bad. Alright, so navigation panel. Okay, so that's the navigation panel. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Instrument and nav master. Okay, so Alright, so let's take a look. Oh my god. Toilet is toilet bomb. It was like, what the hell? Okay, so that's... That's not it. Okay, let's see. So that's it. This is this is the... This is the power. Okay, let's see. Let's go. Nope, that's not it. So now you can see how... Uh, how crazy this aircraft is. You need like PhD level pilots to, to fly this thing. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <laughs> With Airbus, it's just a couple of buttons and you're good to go. This thing is like, oh my. Ukrainians, man, they're like super smart. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's... I'm gonna get these ones. So there it is. That's the that's the navigation master. Okay, that's good. So we got the, we got the we got all of them on, and captain seat panel, uh, side overhead. So it, we need to go with the HCI bus. Let's take a look. I think HCI bus is over here. So control C P. Get this. T cast and then oh, see we can even turn on the fan ventilator. So that's awesome. Like if you if you turn it on, the the motor starts working. Check for the POH in the back. Yeah, it's like a quiz, guys. This is a puzzle. How to turn on engine on this on this <laughs> crazy big huge aircraft? Okay, so we got Captain ESI, uh, TCAS bus. Everything's good. Okay, so that's good. I'm just following the checklist. Okay, FO uh, side panel overhead. So let's take a look at the FO side panel overhead. So same thing here. We're gonna do the same thing, same same thing here. Okay, so we've got some good indications. So there it is. So we've got. Uh, you know what? We might as well turn on the the FO uh, fan. Okay, so that's good. Lights panel. Uh, lights panel. We got nav lights are on. Okay, let's take a look. So nav lights. We should we should now have nav lights. There you go. Nav lights green, and then that should be red. There it is, nav lights are on. All right, now let's go into the fuel pumps. See, I think I'm getting a hang of this. <laughs> I, think, I think, I don't know. Okay, so fuel pumps. Um, okay, so there you go, there we go. So I think that's the fuel pumps. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, I 
I think that's it. It's following the checklist here. Actually, never mind. One second. I think I'm figures below. Actually, I think that was good. Um, yeah, there it is. I think we just turned them off. But yeah, I shouldn't have shouldn't have turned that off. Okay, so this is Kran. That that's that means it's a valve. So we just need to turn on the valve. And then let's take a look. So okay, these are these are on. Actually, we don't really need to do anything here. So I'm just looking at the configuration. Actually, this we need to turn off this. Because we do it uh, this way. Okay. Like so. Yeah, we need to turn on these pumps on the, on the right-hand side. Okay. And then, of course, make sure that these... So, so these valves are on. Okay. So, electric flight back. So, we got that. We got that's complete. Okay, so when clear to start, so we're clear to start. Let's go ahead and do the, the beacon. So we're going to do the, the Mayak. It's a beacon that should... Uh, that should theoretically turn the beacon. There it is. There's the beacon. It's now on. Beacon's now on. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead into the engineer panel. And let's, <laughs> let's walk it. Let's, let's pretend like we're engineering. Engineers. Okay, so start panel. Oh my, this is going to be crazy. Okay, so... <laughs> wait, the starting is going to be crazy. So starting panel. <clears throat> Select open. Oh, thanks for the thanks for the support. Swiss 001 moment. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, dude, I'm like trying to figure out, figure this out. Okay, so... I think that's okay. So that's Zappos. Okay, so that's the start. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Actually, I need to make sure to close these ones. Okay, so so that's good. Um, the select open engine start mode switch is still ultra rich upper position. Uh, actually, okay, so these are all rich upper position. That's good. And on guard, mixture ratio switch is on guard and select all on. So these are these are on, right? So that's good. And mixture, okay, so during start, do the same during auto start. Hydraulic control pump select on. Okay, so hydraulic pumps. So I think these are hydraulic pumps. So Gidra Sistema, that's hydraulic pumps. And we need to, yeah. So a lot of these are not clickable. Okay. So this, this is, this is click ten. Yeah. Can we, can we click these? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Let's see. I guess they, I guess they, they are on. So check your green bar, green. So what's the green bar? Okay, yeah, all green. So green bar is green. Okay. Um, hydraulic pumps, center pumps select off. So that's the. Actually, no. These are these are the center ones. FedEx switches. The FedEx. Do we have the FedEx switches? In this, in the, in the engineering panel. Okay. Okay, so that's probably gonna be. Okay, that's that's the cargo panel. So this is the engine indication. So that's the uh, 
that's good. So, so the fuel system is good. Oh my God, there's this too. <laughs> oh, geez. oh, there it is. So this is this is the um, this is actually the the a APU. So that's the that's what we need to do here. We need to we need to get the EPU running from here. So that's where we skip the part. Okay, so these are good. Zapusk. And then Zapusk. Okay, there we go. Regime, perfect. So left APU is running, right APU is running. Perfect. Okay, we got the APUs. Okay, so there it is. APU RPM is rising, so that's good. Oh my god, I didn't know it's gonna be that bad. Good to see streaming supposer. It's not easy to get views and stay motivated. Oh for sure, yeah. Look, we still got views on Facebook. Facebook is is still pretty good. And I'm happy to see 12 people watching on, on YouTube. That's awesome. Okay, so. So that's gonna be okay, temperature. Glorovka, phenomena. Okay, so that's all automatic. So there we go. So we got the EPUs uh, are good. Okay, so green bar is good. Hydraulic center pumps. Okay, so we've got we've got the EPUs are now running. So that's good. And let's quickly go ahead and check the electrical panel. So electrical panel. Yeah, we've got got good voltage here. So that's good. Okay, so I guess so this is all six. So that's all emergency stuff, which we don't need. Oh my god. You guys gotta give me a you guys gotta, gotta give me a break here. I'm not a I'm not a P Ukrainian PhD uh, engineer here, okay? <laughs> so, Alright, perfect. And I'll start Edic just so start button select and hold three seconds so that's where we go here and then we can start and try to try to see if we can start the engines you know that's not it Okay, so now we see. We do have a button. We do have a. Um, where's the check button? I have no idea. <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy. This is crazy. What have I done? What did I get myself into? You know what I should have just done? Okay, so. Okay, look at that. Hydraulics is good, actually. You know what I should have done? I should have just pressed this button. And we're probably gonna. We're gonna probably press this button eventually but i still not giving up i'm still trying to um trying to start the engines <laughs> oh top panel zaposk okay top panel okay zaposk okay got it oh there you go okay let's see that's right uh but but they're they, they're not clickable though yeah this is this is not it Okay, so this is this is the fire extinguishers, uh, and then this is supposed to be the the starters, but they're not clickable, theoretically, right? So, okay, so there's the engine engine indicators. So we've got the all of the RPMs, and then this is the temperature and temperature at work, so it could be na. Okay, now this is the fuel system. So we've got we set up the fuel system. We set up the APU. So that's APU. So that's all that's all done. So these are not clickable. So now this theoretically should be the en the the engine setup. Maybe those are fire. Yeah, exactly. hit the button. <laughs> hit the button. Yes. Okay, let's see. Maybe maybe we'll try this and then press Zapusk.
Okay. The Zappos, this is the... This is the, the actual... Okay, Bedna Bogata, so that's... Okay, so this theoretically should be the, the starter. Okay. Jeez. Not... The checklist is just the... crazy. Yeah, the manual sucks. It doesn't it doesn't explain anything. It's like, yeah, I go to this panel and just, you know, guess what, what it says in Russian. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is just, okay, we're going to cheat a little bit, just a little bit. So we're going to, we're going to switch to English and let's take a look at the, um, over here. Yeah, it's still, it's still, it's still in Russian. So there's some, some things in, in English, some things in Russian. So... For some reason, I do have these clickable, but I cannot do anything. Okay, so that these pumps are good. These pumps are good. So that's hydraulics. They're all green. And... Oh my god. I need like an Antonov <laughs> captain here. <laughs> okay, so that's good. So Zappos, right? So, so that's the... Zaposk is like the, the engine start. So we're supposed to be able to click this button and it's supposed to it's supposed to do it for us. But if it doesn't, let's take a look at what's wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna see if um if there's something with an APU that we did it wrong. So Okay, so that's automatic. That's automatic. Automatic. So let's do the automatic control. So this theoretically should work now. Okay, so we put it in automatic and then this is done. And yeah, I'm about to give up. <laughs> Try one engine switch. Yeah, but but see the problem is, is that uh, I don't think we we have it. Ever fail. Okay, maybe we do it like this. Is this supposed to turn the turn the engine on? But it's not. Okay, so. Okay, screw it, screw that. Let's take a look at the fuel panel. So in fuel panel, I think we got it all correct. One second, let's see. Yeah, based on fuel pumps configured, we've got... Yeah, actually, yeah, we need this. Okay, that's... Yeah, that wasn't... Actually, okay, this was not right. This was not right, but the... This one has to be left. The crown. Let's maybe. Okay, that's that. Actually, that's not it. That this is this is the Sereska Toplio Prizapaski na Usigorodnom Aerodrome. So that means uh, that's uh, if you're if you're starting at at the high uh, high altitude. This this basically does the uh, the less rich fuel, but that's not it. Okay. Let's try this again. Wow, it's not starting. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, low panel in the in Otk, is it? Oh, режим запуска. Oh, that's right. Oh, you're right. Oh my god, you're so right. Okay, let's see. Okay, now let's let's try just only one. Yeah, that's true. No, that was true. But I think it's something to do with probably quite possibly this could be the APU bleed. 
Alex, can you see where the EPU bleed is? EPU bleed system? And this is this thing is like a space shuttle. Oh my god. Probably even more complex than that. This APU bleed is where we need the air from the APU. So, so here's the APU. So we've got it all in automatic, in in automatic mode. And engine null function. But no other warning lights here, which is good. Uh, where is the? APU? Oh, that's that might be it. Actually, no, then, never mind. Hmm. Your intake not not closed. Ready? Oh, ready to start. Maybe that's that's it. So. Maybe this might work. Okay, let's try now. Real plane to show that computer on. Then you check if you need computer on. Real plane to show th which computer is is that this one? Uh, this one. I don't think we need to turn it on though. Is that one is uh. Yeah, there's no way we, we can turn that on. Okay, so I know we're running out of time and we're probably gonna <laughs> probably gonna have to we're gonna we're gonna, probably gonna have to automatically uh turn on the engines, but I'm just gonna quickly, quickly, quickly check how I need to do this here. And if I won't be able to figure out, we're just gonna go flat. Screw it. So these are lights. And yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so lost. So okay. This is where's the hydraulics I mean not, not the hydraulics but the air system. Battery oh my god, look at that battery one overheat. Okay, left DPU generator and right DPU generator on. So we can probably turn off the batteries. Um, yeah, so that's good. Battery one off. Yeah, so batteries are good. Power is good. <laughs> Zelensky streaming flight sim now. You don't have a word <laughs> when Ramsey says. Oh, never mind. That's good. <laughs> no, no, man. I'm trying to. St I, I have no idea how to start this thing. This is insane. I, I'm like totally lost in uh, in this. Is I'm trying to see where the EPU is and sorry the EPU uh, bleeder and I just I just don't understand where it is and the manual it just just sucks. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to press the magic button and the magic button is it's like no it's not like 747 it's it's completely different it's it's so freaking hard. Yeah, I have no idea. I know, I know none of you guys do. <laughs> Same here. Okay, so well, why, don't, why don't we do this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend some time doing this. I know I don't want to waste your time. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, and it's a fail today. Uh, we're gonna do the magic button. So we're gonna do ready to fly. So, uh, but now we're gonna see where what we did wrong. Let's take a look. So, okay, so we need to open ready boosts. So now we're just turning on there. We're going to turn on the RPMs. Okay, yeah, uh, I was wrong here. And I'm not sure what, okay, so engines were actually everything was in in 
manual mode here. This was ready to start. This is why we watch other people start it first and we act like we knew the, the whole time. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm gonna have to read read it. Uh, read it further. Okay, also this systems were... Okay, so we did everything right here. And we almost did it right in the in the fuel panel. APU panel, yes, APU panel says ready to start. It's just I'm not sure where the APU bleed is. Okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it do the video later. I'm gonna do the, that reel. So here this these were these were good. And okay, yeah, we got the engine started. Anyways. Let's go fly this thing. Okay, now flying this thing is going to be interesting. All right, so I pressed the link to a few Antonov drivers. Hope they'll join the stream. Oh, nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. All right, so you'll see my failed attempt at uh, being able to start the engines, but we're just gonna we're just gonna take off. Take off. That's it. I I, I gave up. I I'm 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 not a you know, Maria Pilot. <laughs> Far from it. Hey, David, Moon, how's it going? All right, Alex, thank you so much. Appreciate, appreciate the. Yeah, let's see if we have some Antonov uh, pilots joining. That'll be great. That'll be so. Sp I'll feel so special <laughs> that they'll get to watch me struggle here. Okay, let's disconnect the GPU. And here we go. We're gonna do a pushback. That's right. Zelensky never gives up. That is right. Okay, parking brake is off and now we're pushing back so we're gonna push back over here so i think since we're loaded uh let me just quickly go into the flap position we need to determine the flap position uh so based on the weights so weights okay let's take a look so we've got our rate is 448 so we need to be at 140 knots, so 259 kilometers an hour. So that's 259. And just gonna looking at our airspeed indicator. So 259, yeah, we need to be roughly around here. So that's that's our speed bug. And since we are at 450, we're gonna select flaps. Okay, let's see the takeoff. Uh, okay, so let's do this. I'm just looking at the key takeoff procedure and yeah, it looks like they do need flaps full for for takeoff. Okay, so full full to 25, and it's going to be 330 kilometers an hour. So that's the climb speed. So 330, and we've got what are V1 speeds. I assume that the V1 speed is is the probably the blue blue bug over there. Approach speed, approach speed. Okay, at least we got the approach speed. That's the yeah. This plane was actually made to fly Buran Space Shuttle. Oh, that's amazing. That that's crazy. That is that is super awesome. Okay, you know what? I really like that little fan, so let's turn on the little fan ventilator. We will turn it on. Here it is. Here we go. Fuck is a kilometer. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Put something like 15, 20. Not sure what flap gates are. Uh, I think um, I think we'll do... Probably do f uh, full, right? Because if you look at the pedestal, it says... So most likely uh, we'll do full flaps. And here you go, flaps are extending. And that's that should give us a fairly good lift. And here we go, pushing back. In Hostomel. Exactly, I remember see, uh, see them fly as a kid, TV, two planes, or top of the... 
This guy's a spy. <laughs> Who's a spy? All right, there you go. So we've got uh, a real 737 captain watching with us today, Alex Konstantinovsky, flies for WestJet, and he's uh, so awesome of helping us out. He also flew the Russian airplanes. Uh, he's from Kiev as well, so he's uh, he's Ukrainian. So this is awesome. We're gonna we're gonna have some help here and commentary. But we had to we did we did have to press the cheat button unfortunately. But that's okay. I I'll uh, since this is the first time of me flying it, uh, you know, you're going to have to forgive me for this. Oh, it's a poser says the 74 with a space shuttle flew over my school in elementary school. That's crazy. All right, here we go. We're going to stop the pushback. And I'm not sure why it's Pushback's not it's not stopping. Okay, there it is. Yeah, it's stopping now. Alright, so parking brakes. Yeah, we'll set the parking brakes for now. So let's review the 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 cabin here. So this is our the управление турбинами and then УПРТ and УПТ so that's okay, so these are turbines most likely okay here we go so this is our regular altimeter so we're gonna set set the altimeter based on the settings so now we have the uh, 1013 so that's good so this says this is the altitude in meters uh, that's the altitude in, in meters as well so that's our altitude in feet so we currently have, yeah, 2,000 meters, I believe. And that's the, <laughs> that's our airspeed indicator. I think that's our G-force indicator, it looks like. Or actually, no, angle of attack, looks like. And then we have our sort of HSI. And there we go. We can switch it to navigation mode. Uh, we can switch it to landing mode. We can try shooting for the ILS, and you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I'm good. We're gonna do it now, actually. So let's, uh, let's see if we can, if we can achieve ILS. I know. So I wanna, I want to, um, I want to do it right away. So there's the Burispel. So we're gonna open the charts for Burispel, and we're gonna do approach. I think we wanted to do 3-6 left, right? So we're going to do a uh, burst spell. We're going to do 3-6 left. Okay, 3-6 left. So that's going to be over here. So that's our chart for 3-6 left. And our localizer is 110, this move one. Tune that in here. Okay, so there it is. Yeah, we'll switch that to ILS mode, and then we'll see if it, if it if it gives us at least some level of guidance. And over here, we're gonna have to switch it to to approach approach mode. So that's that's how we're gonna do it. Hopefully. And let's set the let's set the the approach speed o o right away. So that's gonna be so we're at fi two fifty nine. So two fifty nine. That's what we're gonna keep. So we'll keep this as a reference. Two fifty nine. There it is. So that's gonna be our bug over here. So that's our bug. So we're using full flaps and perfect. So I think we're ready to go. Let's take off now. And let's fly this beauty. Okay, so since we don't have any wind, we're just gonna take off from the... We're not gonna taxi all the way. We're not gonna backtrack, we're just gonna take off from this edge right, right here. And this is gonna be...
which runway is that going to be? Let's see. That's going to be runway 33. Here it is. I have to, I have to read the. I have to re read the uh, the texture because it's not even on for reflect. Right, so let's just let's just put the iPad on on charge for now. It is running out of juice. I'm just gonna set it set it aside. I'm gonna take a sip of my cold coffee. Hey Mark, how's it going? Good to see you. All right, here we go. We're now lining up runway 33. Flaps are full. We're gonna use full flaps right now, just to try it out, see see how it is. Because we're heavily loaded. We're about 450 uh, tons, so 150 thousands. So we are taking off from from Hostomel. Runway 33, and we're ready to go. New plane, yeah, Mark. This is the Ukrainian Antonov An-225, the one that was destroyed during a Russian attack. So we're we're now flying it. Uh, first time on the stream, and every every star donations today will go to, to Ukrainian charity. All right. Easy to fly? Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so here we go. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Let's go ahead and take off for supply full power. All right, perfect power set. When you were gonna need to go back to 118 uh, on, during the climb. But here, here we go, power set. We're in the center line. Everything's looking good, so our speed's alive. We got 200 kilometers an hour. 300. Well, 250. 260. And we take off now. Look at that. Here we go. And positive rate gear up. Our gear's coming up. And now we're going to do a little bit of flying. We're going to fly to Chernobyl first. We just took off from from Hostomel over here. Beautiful, look at that. Such a beautiful bird. Okay, so let's maintain... I'll probably maintain close to 300. And now we're gonna slowly bring the power to 118. Outer marker beep is good. And we'll do flaps up in stages. go wow look how massive this thing is wow it just it just looks so mesmerizing so we're gonna fly it at a relatively low altitude so I think we're gonna yeah so uh, the outer marker is good it flaps up so here we go we got our maximum speed uh, bug as well so I'm gonna switch the heading now shortly and you'll see the, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant shortly. Because we're flying in a in a very fast aircraft, so we're gonna switch heading to prepaid now. So that's probably gonna be around 30 degrees on to the right. Here we go, beautiful bird. It's very nice to fly, gotta admit. Just checking. There you go. Yeah, I think I think we can now set the heading. There is the Prepitch River, so we're gonna just maintain the right heading. So just a bit to the left. Yeah, just looking at the. Yeah, here we go. We're now heading to Chernobyl. So now I'm going to lower the throttles, just so that we can maintain the the speed and then just trim it nicely. Looking at the vertical airspeed. Beautiful, look at that. Here we go, we're just flying north of Kiev. Uh, this is the unfortunate area where the Russian forces been uh, 
you know trying to take over they they were they were actually the we're flying from the direction that they were they were coming in from uh, from chernobyl because they had to they had to go through chernobyl because that's uh, near the belarus border so by the way thanks uh, thanks for the follow benito and kitia thank you so much so we're pre pretty much flying on the path of uh, of the russian forces as they were as they were going to towards kiev so the hostomid is just over here that's where the bucha is and, and kiev is just a bit to the left so right now we're flying to to uh to chernobyl just to give you a little bit of of entertainment and then uh we're gonna fly to kiev we're gonna overfly maidan and we're just gonna explore kiev do some do some low, low by flying and then we're, we'll attempt to land it in the Brisbane airport and once again thanks for sending all the stars we will donate to the charity that's gonna help Ukraine all the donations today will go towards that I won't pocket any of that all right so now let's let's throttle it down So let's take a look at some of the views that are available. These are fixed views. I'm probably gonna have to uh, redo them, but I like this one. This one is this one is really nice. This view is really nice, and then and then of course on the right hand side. And look at the beautiful um, imagery of uh, satellite imagery as we're we're entering exclusion zone. So that's the Chernobyl exclusion zone. We're about to enter it uh, as we're flying. We're gonna be yeah we're gonna, we're actually gonna fly to Dzetki, so that's where the the main we're gonna overfly to Dzetki. That's where the main entrance to the exclusion zone is, and, and it's here it is at, at the front. That's where that's where I went to my Chernobyl tour. We had to go through Dzetki. That's the that's the checkpoint that you go through in order to enter the exclusion zone for the tour. So you know these tours are not no longer available. So yeah, Will Wilder says, beautiful plane, congratulations, good job on Costa Rica, Iberia, yesterday we had a flight to Australia and to Costa Rica with 15 hours flying. Just to get here, Iberia was historic flight on aviation. Nice, that's awesome, appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for your, for your, for your comments. Okay, so Tijatki is gonna be, so this is the, the P05, highway P05, and Tijatki is gonna be the one that's gonna have the road joining from the right. I'm just checking. Just checking where it is. I think it's. I think that that's it. I think yeah, that's. That yep, that's where. This is the checkpoint. The famous checkpoint as you enter Chernobyl uh, exclusion zone. That's the one over here at the bottom. So that's where you go to to enter the Chernobyl exclusion zone. And look at that, guys. Team Red is winning. We got 19 people watching on YouTube and 18 people watching on Facebook. So Team Red, congratulations, <laughs> you're winning. So we've got the, the Facebook gaming versus YouTube today. That's Team Red versus Team Blue. And look at this, we're, we're now giving you a bit of a tour to Chernobyl exclusion zones. We're gonna overfly city of Chernobyl. Here's the Pripet River and the, and the reservoir, the cooling pond reservoir and uh, Chernobyl is just just a bit a bit uh, right of us. So Chernobyl is the city where you can actually live. Go Team Red! That's right, Disney Daddy says Team Red. Yes, go Team Red. That's right. <laughs> so Chernobyl is the city that's actually not abandoned. So this city is where all the workers live that support the plant. And if you were to go on a tour, you can live there in a hotel. Uh, the only rule in Chernobyl is that you cannot live there if you're under 18 years old. So when uh, we went for our two-day tour, we actually stayed in Chernobyl. We stayed in the Soviet Union era hotel. That was really nice. But that was that was fun. And when we flew there in the Cessna, so uh, one of my friends who's a blogger, uh, he actually uh, moved here because of the war. But he's the pilot uh, that flew. I flew with. He said that there is a. Um, there's like the Ukrainian sort of equivalent of KGB that sits there and tracks all the airplanes. So we had to stay uh, away from the Chernobyl because they they try to catch you if you if you uh, overfly the restricted area. And I'll show you the restricted area. 
So when you're actually flying in a plane, uh, we're going to enter that restricted zone. It is, and you'll see it in a second. So the restricted zone, okay, what's coming up. So here's the restriction zone, right? So ground to 5,500 feet. So this is very recent because a lot of people have been flying their drones in the area. So they want to restrict, of course, the red forest. So red forest, all this area is heavily contaminated, by the way. And then, of course, uh, the area around the nuclear power plant. So when we flew in a Cessna, we kind of had to fly like here and around the plants and do a bit of a circle. And then and then we uh, flew to Duga. So we're actually going to fly to Duga as well today. So just a bit of a, a bit of a tour for you. So here's the city of Chernobyl. You can see all the all of the buildings. Our hotel was, I think, somewhere around here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna have to check. <laughs> Definitely a spy. This guy knows way too much. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is not a secret information. And, and you know, I've been to I've been to Chernobyl, right? So I, I know this I know this this area uh, really well. So this is reactor number five and six. So these were not built. So you will see them in the videos that I'm going to post later. And uh, you know, and I, as I said, when when the whole war is going to war is going to stop, I'm actually going to post these videos. For now, I'm just not posting them due to obvious reasons, right? So I think you know Chernobyl is definitely not not a, not the right topic right now. But yeah, so this is the reactor five and six, and then this is the unfamous reactor number four. So right now it is enclosed in the in this in this sarcophagus called Navarka. So that's the one that's covering the old Soviet Union sarcophagus. So here is um, like if you fly in the air, the level of radiation is is normal. But if you if you essentially walk around the plant, it's going to be roughly around 80 uh, micro rankings per hour. And uh, it's it's all scattered and it's all uneven across uh, across all these areas. So if you go on a tour, the they show you the clean parts so so you get to see um, you know you get to be in the safe spots so here it is this is the uh, this is the construction site of reactor number uh, five and six and the cooling pond by the way is being yeah cooling pond is being dried out by the way so uh, we also went into a, a restaurant over here so this is the this is the restaurant it's called the Dalnia number five I think so there's a restaurant that you can go to uh, or actually, wait. Never mind. It's this building over here. This one. This one. It was really close to the to the to construction site. And here is the re reactor number four. So we're gonna do a bit of a flyby there. Here it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Let me just quick check the speed. Okay, speeds are good. And here's the here's the reactor number four. And the varka. So now we'll do a bit of a turn. We'll visit city of Pripyat. But now we're just gonna do a bit of a, a bit of a sluggish turn and we're gonna overfly the plant once again. So as you can see we've entered the restrictive airspace. It's 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 only possible if you're if you're flying it on the simulator, but if you're flying there in real life, this would not be possible. Even on the Maria. Okay, there's Prepet. There's the ghost town. Look how big the ghost town is. So ghost town of Prepet is huge. There's the famous Ferris wheel on the left. And what's interesting... I love when you speak Russian. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm not gonna... <laughs> I just sent this link to Flight Sim Group. Let's see if you can get more peeps on Facebook. Oh, thanks, Marcel. I appreciate it. All right, so here's the... Yeah, we, we did the helicopter tour, remember? Uh, to, to, this, to this spot. So I won't go into too much detail because I did I did talk about everything there in the helicopter tour. But let's let's uh, fly again near the plant. But yeah, thanks Marcel. I appreciate the support, man. Thank you so much for sharing the stream and uh, you know sharing is always caring. Truly, truly appreciate your help here. And of course, we get more folks. That's always good, right? Because we like to be as realistic as we possibly can. So today. I tried to, to do the startup and unfortunately failed, but then again, you, you give me a break, right? This airplane takes six people to fly and, and I really don't understand the, the, all of the Soviet acronyms there. <laughs> so, so, you know, while I do understand it, the, what's written in there, but the acronyms are just like, I'm like, where's the APU bleed? I have no idea where the APU bleed is. 
So that's, you guys gotta give me a break. But the reel on how to start Maria is coming. All right, so let's do a bit of a lower pass over here. And here you go, beautiful. I think it's with sunset. Is it sunset? Yeah, beautiful sunset. Whoa, look at that. Beautiful sunset here. Yeah, the lady says the altitude is 300. Você está triste? Here we go. That's not possible in real life, by the way. So what we're what we're doing right now. And here's Duga on the in the front. So we're gonna overfly Duga as well. National Geographic is showing us around. I love it. Dude, that's hilarious. Why do you think I look like Zelensky? I don't look like him at all. Like, uh, you, you told me that, right? Like, that I look like him? That's that's definitely not possible. <laughs> all right, and here we go. This is um, this is the this is the prepet ghost town. Lillian Lillian says Hyundai, nice. So that's Jupiter Jupiter plant. So this is the this is the plant that was producing electronic components uh, for actually for missiles. So, so they were using this this plant in in Pripyat to kind of produce a lot of the a lot of the military electronics. So this one's got a basement with a heavily contaminated. Uh, uh, radioactive materials so don't go there if you go on the tour and of course don't go to the hospital because hospitals have been contaminated as well as the the area around ferris wheel over here is also contaminated because of the helicopters they used to land here and they used to wash them but notice how close the power plant is is to the city so when it exploded it actually produced a lot of uh, you know a lot of radioactive uh, materials so so that's Chernobyl, pretty much in a nutshell. So here's the uh, city of Pripyat, and this is the uh, Chernobyl nuclear power plant, and that's reactor number four. I'm on Team Purple, watching both both uh, for comments. Nice. Oh, should we do Team? Should we do Purple as well? We should do Purple. Also via him, общество обороны в национальном химическом строительстве. Oh, interesting. Nice. All right. Lilian says Milamo. Nice. So right now we're gonna fly to Duga. So this is this is a very secret. Uh, well, it used to be secret Soviet Union era antenna over here. So we're gonna fly to it. It's called uh, Chernobyl 2. So this was a secret city where where regular citizens could not enter. Oh, thanks so much, 305. Love the content. Just subscribe. Thank you. We're flying this Maria for the first time, and uh, we're just doing the tour of Chernobyl. I went there myself, so I'm gonna post that stuff on YouTube as well. So thanks a lot for subscribing, and you'll see that that content. Uh, you, you should check out the video where I flew there on the Cessna with one of my friends. So yeah, me llamo Moses. Moses, tu vas a volar grandote, dame tu juego. Quiero mi parte de. Sorry, I don't know what that means, but that's, at least I could read it. So yeah, he, see the antenna. So this was used to detect nuclear launches. Well, you'll see it in just a minute. Because I think it, it it takes time for it to load, but this this antenna used to detect nuclear launches all the way from United States. So this is the receiving antenna. There is uh, there is a transmitter antenna. I think around 90 kilometers away from from here. But the rumor has it that they needed this the to be close to nuclear power plant so that they could power the antenna. Although uh, the tour guide, my tour guide said that it, that it was a myth. So as you could see, this little city. It has a. It has the apartment buildings. It, ha it even had the kindergarten and school, and this this is the big antenna. Uh, it's actually huge. So uh, the Zelensky, the current president of Ukraine, declared this a national historic site. So they no longer are going to demolish it. So they were trying to demolish it, but look how close it is to nuclear power plant. So when they wanted to demolish it, uh, there was a, the engineers said that it might cause the the earthquake that's why they just kept it there so if you look at my video on my youtube channel on the cessna we actually did a low fly by this antenna so if you paid attention in the video you would you would have seen that we we did that low low pass with the, with the ukrainian blogger pilots that i flew with so his his channel is uh, plain ukraine so when we did that uh uh, yeah, it's over horizon detection system. My granddad was a chief engineer in the cup. Oh wow, Alex, that's that's awesome, dude. We should go for a beer. You gotta tell me all about this, cause um, I so want to learn it. If it's not a secret, I would love to learn uh, about like how it worked and where the where the um, 
where the transmitter was because that's an interesting one i think the transmitter they they got rid of it so by the way this is the chernobyl exclusion zone of course all of this all of this forest is contaminated heavily contaminated with radioactive materials so you cannot um hunt here you cannot uh you know pick mushrooms and you cannot be here basically so you you should only i told you already okay got it yeah yeah no i know i know but i mean like if you got some more information on it i'd love to learn yeah i remember you said it yeah but like i if if there is any more info i'd love to learn All right so let's do another low fl uh, flyby and we're gonna now go to kiev the capital city and we're gonna attempt to do the landing so we're gonna attempt to land at Br bristol international so here it is here's duga no i'm just flying it manually i i'm using the joystick to fly it manually i'm just trimming it yeah there see like my failed trim attempts so i'm using my um my control i don't know if you, yeah i can see it because it's it's over here yeah flying manual <laughs> oh man ramsey you're funny man <laughs> so yeah not not using autopilot i i still uh, haven't figured out exactly how to use autopilot here so once again first flight so this is like some funky ukrainian technology that i'm i'm still bad at right so so I guess this is the autopilot. Oh yeah, that's auto thrust. Never mind. Um, so that's auto thrust, and then we got yeah hor horizon. So we can, I guess we can keep the horizon. So if I press ER, that's gonna keep the horizon. It's probably gonna do the the heading. Yeah, so let's let me just review the landing procedures. Okay, so braking, manual braking, and we've got the okay, so approach speed, approach procedure. So like set mode to approach. So we got set mode to approach. We get max speed, possible configuration, and start of the ILS and check idle is on or here. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll we'll see if we can capture the ILS. If anything, we'll just land it manually. But now, now I turned on the autopilot. Now I did. So we're flying back to Kiev. So yeah, we're we're pretty much on the on the exact same heading to Kiev. So there it is. Yeah, I'm gonna turn on the autopilot for now, just so that just so we can look, we can fly it manually. And we're gonna we're gonna increase the power. Are you having problems switching panel to English? Uh, actually, yeah. You know what? Uh, we'll switch it back to Russian. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, let's switch it back to Russian. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. AP means after pilot. Vis, vis means visata. So that's that means altitude. Uh, Skorosh means uh, that means the uh, that means the airspeed. So there it is. So that's the that's the that's the speed. So let's say if I if I press this, it's gonna it's gonna keep the it's gonna do the auto thr auto throttle for us. So over here, I can I can control it, but I'll need to set it to uh, to the speed based on what I've what I've set it before. Yeah, so just we're just playing with a told you. Hello from Toronto, Captain Dom. Hello, how's it going? Welcome. I'm in Toronto as well, so we're flying this beautiful Maria aircraft. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate uh, you know your support of uh, watching it from the from YouTube. And look at this beautiful sunset. Yeah, we're gonna have to adjust the weather a little bit. We don't want it to be too dark, as we're gonna go into our yeah. We're gonna use our cheat over here. There it is. We're gonna fly to to Kiev, uh, the capital city of Ukraine. And over here, we set down. Okay, so let's see. How do we control it? Because that's that's gonna be another one. Oh, Shalom, there it is. So that's the. So that's the. So this is the, the altitude. 
So that's the vertical speed. So we can do 1001, and that's how we keep it. There we go. Yep, Dom says, nice. I'm waiting for this beat to come to Xbox because my PC broke. I need to get a new one. Yeah, yeah, it's coming to, to, to Xbox. So this is such a cool airplane. I love it already. I'm so lost in it that I'm just like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But at least we were able to take off. That's that's the progress. And of course, you know, oh, look at that. Team Red is winning 18 versus 9 people on Facebook. Yes, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting me on the, on the Team Red. Mike Lamke, thank you so much. Dean says hi flight awesome hey how's it going and here's the Chernobyl exclusion zone we're still here uh, we're still flying over the, the exclusion zone we're now flying to to Kiev uh, so this is um, Kiev Reservoir over here on the uh, left hand side and then it's gonna go into the to this river over here Dnipro River and we're gonna we're gonna enter the northern part of Kiev and then we're gonna overfly Kiev and just look at some of the some of the landmarks and then we're going to attempt to land in uh, in Kiev Bariskel Airport. So here. Just autopilot for now. Uh, I have the autopilot on for now. I'm just going to see what else do we have here that we didn't see. Okay, so this this is the light lightning system. So as we, as you can see, I can turn on the lights. This thing is for for taxiing, of course. So that's as This is the radio radio control. So of course, none of this is active. And and yeah, this this is all light uh, lighting. It's pretty cool. I wish we can turn this thing on. Let's see if we can turn on this computer. Oh, if, okay. So this is this is arm. Here we can. I guess we can arm this. that's that's how you arm it okay so that's the this is spoilers yeah we can arm it now I wish we can turn on uh, like this this computer actually I don't think we can that would be nice there's some really cool Ukrainian technology that I want, always wanted to check out so we've got about um, geez how much yeah, around seven minutes ago, like 30 nautical miles. We're 30 nautical miles away. Can I gonna turn off the autopilot? And we're gonna do some some manual flying now. And I'll show you Kiev a bit. I'm with Team Zelensky. That's right, Team Zelensky. That's right. So, by the way, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're going to check out the old mansion of. Um, of the former president Yanukovych, the the, the pro-Russian president. So we're going to check out his mansion. It's not a big mansion, and it, I think it is on a simulator. I've seen it in real life when we did the, the tour on the Cessna. That was really cool. But yeah, it was it was hilarious. So that's uh, near Nove Petrivci. And just gotta remember where it is. Oh, awesome! Shady said, "El Nasli, thanks for the follow on Facebook." Yeah, we got some, we got some Facebook following, and I think we got some new followers as well on uh, subscribers on YouTube. So you guys are fantastic! Thanks so much for your support. I post a lot of. Oh, look at that! Triple seven. We got triple seven subscribers now on, on YouTube. That's amazing. Yeah. So Joel, Ivan Fernandez, Johnny Rocket, thanks so much, and Chris Lindsay, thanks so much for for supporting the the YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm just trying to see where it is. Tare Petrivce, Nove Petrivce. So that should be... Oh, look at that, it says Putin's house. Yeah, I think that's that's it. So see how it says Putin's house? <laughs> I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's his house, but I know that there is a... Yeah, 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 so this is... This is I think this is the mansion, like he's got his own helipad and stuff. And uh, yeah, this got this huge land. Look at that. This this land is huge. So that guy, the pro pro Putin president, uh, uh, before the the 2004 revolution, so, sorry, 2014 revolution. Uh, he was he was the president Yanukovych, and then when people of Ukraine uh, kind of went outside and they and they fought for their 
for their freedom, right? And and just kind of stood and and uh, you know kicked them kicked them out. Uh, they, I think they turned that place into a museum. I would love to see it though yeah, next time I'm in Kiev. So 305 is asking, how do you load uh, a flight plan? So I think the only way to load it is actually through uh, the the GNS, right? So here's the GNS. I think that's the only way to go, right? Because we don't really have a, uh, you know, we don't really have a, like a FMC of some sort, right? So we just create a flight plan here, right? So you'd have to manually kind of like dial it in. And then we can also do approaches, right? Right. So we can do procedures and then we can select approach and then just kind of like, you know, I guess, uh, I guess we could do direct to to Brisbane and select the approach but yeah I don't really want to I, I, I want to get a controller for this so I don't want to kind of press the buttons because it sucks I I'm used to to GNS but I'm used to like using the rotary control not, not the mouse so that's what you'll use to enter to enter the flight plan so all right so we're, we're almost there we're approaching Kiev Kiev is I have a custom scenery I suggest you get it the custom scenery is from flightsim.to so you can get that scenery and you can enjoy all of the beauty of of Kiev. There's a lot of really cool landmarks, including Maidan, that's the Independence Square. Uh, then the TV Tower. There's also the Iron Lady. There's lots of lots of great great landmarks. So now we're gonna overfly Yunukovych uh, Mansion, and you'll see it. I I hope because we saw Putin's mansion a while back, and that was pretty big. So let's see uh, what this one is. Yeah, I think it's it's straight ahead over here. It should be in. Um, it should be loading via the satellite data, so it should be over here. That Novi Petrivci is over here, and this is where the the Yanukovych mansion was, the former president of of Ukraine. That is now a museum. So I'm just just trying to see and. And cross-reference it to oh yeah there it is so there's the monastery and this is he's mentioned so roughly over here and then there's the helipad over there yeah there there it is I think we got it and I think it's either this one or that one over here so the, so either either one right so there's the helipad there's the helipad over here and then this I think that's the mansion yeah there it is oh look at that it's over here that's the uh, Yunukovych mansion. We're just overflying it now. That's hilarious. There it is. It's in the flight sim. That's awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. All right, and here comes Kyiv. After the war ends, I strongly suggest you go here. It's a beautiful city and see, you'll enjoy it. It's very nice. And let's see. You will enjoy it. And here it is. So now we're approaching the uh, Vyshgorod. So that's Vyshgorod. And then Kiev is just straight ahead. So let's get uh, let's get to our company. I'm just going to slow down a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some flaps. Uh, just so that we can, we can uh, fly a bit slower. Because we're going to fly through some of the, some of the landmarks. And here it is. Look how densely populated the city is. So the Russians really thought that they're going to take the city in like three days. That's impossible. They're in a, they would never be able to do this. Okay, so see the lady said that the uh, radar altitude is now 300. She says Busata 300. That means 300. All right, 300. And that's 300 meters, by the way. And look at that. There's a... Uh, there's some landmarks here in Kiev. So that's the TV tower. We're going to fly to it in a bit. But now we're flying to the center center of, of Kiev. And I believe we're going to fly through Maidan, the Independence Square, shortly. So this is Abalone. So that's the Abalone um, district. So there's all the buildings for Abalone district. And all the bridges. And now we're entering... We're entering the, the the main sort of downtown 
and we're gonna overfly the the independence square I believe we should be on, on top of it and I'll show you how it looks that'll be my down independence square in Kiev and yeah there it is we're actually gonna be flying directly over it so here it is and then we're gonna attempt to land in Kiev Borispil Airport and okay so that's uh, Dynamo Stadium there it is, there's the, there, there it is, there it is, there's the independent square right here, that's the Maidan New Zealand State. When I was in Kiev, I was staying in the hotel over here, there was a hotel here, so that's the independent square, that's the main sort of landmark of Kiev. Okay, and then now we're gonna go see uh, the statue called Iron Lady, it's a really big statue. And I'm just gonna do a bit of a banking turn and you'll see the statue on the left hand side. There it is, there's the statue. It's called Iron Lady. So the Iron Lady's got a lot of, um, it's actually uh, got the, the sword and the shield. So that's the, that's one of the main landmarks as well. this we're just doing a left bank nice flying yeah I hope we don't we don't uh, okay let's see I'm just checking the speeds okay here we go yeah see we can do a white banks pretty cool you can see a car moving in the city oh yeah that's right you can see cars uh, you can see like the railroad bridges and you can see lots of buildings so yeah this is this is the the iron lady over here and then that's the uh, the huge monastery as well. That's the Kiev Pichors Kalavra. It's a huge monastery. As you can see, beautiful architecture. And we're now flying back to the Independence Square. So this, okay, so 150. Yeah, we're a bit a bit too low. So we're just gonna. 100 storm means 100 I guess it looks at the radar al altitude so we will see the independent square again in just a second it's kind of hard to navigate well, one sec but I think yeah I think we're gonna we're gonna overfly it or did we just pass it and yeah we just, I think we just passed it way too many buildings okay let's go see the uh, the TV tower so so we're looking at the TV tower. Yeah, the graphics are cool, right? Isn't it awesome? So this is the Kiev TV tower. One of my friends, uh, like the, the pilot from, from Kiev, he says, this is how you can see if you can fly VFR. If you see the top of the tower, you can fly VFR. If you don't see the top of the tower, most likely you can't because the clouds are so low. So you can, you can actually uh, notice uh, how how low the cloud cover is based on the TV tower heights. There it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so I think that's that's it for Kiev tour. And now we're going to try to attempt to go to uh, 36, uh, 36 left. So we're going to try to attempt uh, to, to do the ILS. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. But I know that based on our configuration, our landing speed is, and let's see. And I'm going to preset that right now. So the VREF, uh, let me see. So okay, just looking at the table. Okay, so VREF for 450 is one, uh, 259. I'm going to set that 259. Now it's going to be at the, at the, at the landing flaps. So 259. And we're going to continue flying straight for now and do a bit of a left hand turn so i'm just trying to set the bug 259 based on our weight because we got lots of helicopters uh in the cargo right so we need to 
And don't go away, we're gonna be landing shortly. And there it is. I'm just gonna pull up the pull up the approach charts. So we need to be at 3,940 feet. And let's let's quickly go up to that. Uh, 3,500. We're gonna go up to that to that. Uh, so I'm looking at this chart over here. And let's turn off the follow mode over here. So let's let's do a bit of a, like a downwind to that. And we're gonna we're gonna kind of rely on sort of going visual today. But I'm gonna see if I'm gonna get the. Um, oh yeah, you know what? I think that's gonna work. Look, I think it already found the localizer. So I think it I think it found the localizer. Yeah, Alexa Slava Kraini, that's right. Slava Kraini, you know him Slava. All right. There it is. So that's Giuliani right here, so that's another airport, but it's the air the airport is very um, it's very short, short runway. So I've been to that airport. It's got a really nice museum, but we're probably, we're not gonna be able to land there. So now we're gonna, we're gonna go to 3,500 as we are on a downwind. So I'm gonna get the flaps, flaps up for now. So our V speeds is at 259. So we're gonna, V rest speed, so we're gonna maintain that uh, when we have the fl fl flaps full. So let's let's uh, make sure that we've got that proper altitude. I think the localizer is good. Yeah, we've got the we've got the landing, and here's the flight flight director. Yeah, I think we're climbing again. Okay, let's let's just lower it up a bit. And start our descent. So the airport is on our left hand side. So we're just flying a little bit of a of a downwind leg right now. And we're gonna land shortly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just really going to record this. Got the flight recorder. So that way we can watch our landing and see how well we did, if we did well. Okay, let's start our sort of a base turn and we'll go into our final approach fix I'm just referencing ourselves to the charts right now but we'll see we'll see if we'll be able to do a visual and now I'm just gonna back to, to the charge mode and I'm gonna kind of like put it fine so I can see how we are in relation to it. There we go. So yeah, we're just, just going to make sure to hand fly it in. Yeah, it's really hard to trim this aircraft. Uh, Street Race says you're going to create so <laughs> Dude. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so let's arm. Yeah, so speed brakes are going to be armed. Let's see, that speed brake is armed. 3,900 and we're, looks like we're in a good approach, approach path. Just, uh, we're gonna have to go to 3,000, yeah, 940, yeah, so roughly around here. So we need to maintain this altitude and we're about to land in, in Kiev, Bristol. So let's maintain this altitude here. And the airport's just on the left side. 
William, thank you so much for the notify in the chat. Appreciate it. Uh, just also please note we're live on, on YouTube as well. We got 25 people watching on, on YouTube. That's awesome. Thanks a lot for your support. And we're flying the beautiful Maria and ton of N225. And we've got Team Red is winning today. Oh my God, Team Red all the way. Team YouTube. Yeah, we get the fan going. Look at that. So just to keep the keep the toilet from you know from sweating. All right, so we got three thousand nine hundred. Yeah, roughly around here. So we're maintaining that speed. I'm flying it manually, and we're we're not gonna go to localize the push thread, but localize our lights. Yeah, we're gonna try to see um, if we're gonna be able to do this uh, with autopilot. So we'll see if we're gonna capture the glide slope with it. So we'll 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 see. If not, then we'll just gonna manually do it. But I want to see if uh, if the autopilot actually works for the ILS because we got vertical, we have the localizer, and then we horizontal. Yeah, we'll arm it in the just a bit. Yeah, the pilot off for now. John says, "Why finally got the plane started up in the air?" Oh man, you missed it! You missed it all. You just gave up on us, didn't you? <laughs> you left, man. We did so many. Like we went to Chernobyl. John, like you're 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 missing out, man. Some people watching is FBI for sure. Yeah, for sure, right? 100%. Okay, two to eight. Let's uh, let's get that that altitude going. Okay, so we're doing good. At the final approach, fix off lanes. We need to be 3,940. Um, curious where where is our deviation for the glide slope, right? So. But that's one thing I'm trying to learn here because, you know, it, it's great to fly like Boeing and Airbus, right? Where, where, it, where it tells you everything. This this thing doesn't really tell you nothing. So, no, no worries, man. No, I'm just kidding. I'm no, just kidding. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no, you didn't have like I was struggling, man, big time. I, I I was struggling with the with the setup, with the with the startup. So, I totally get it. There's the airport. Airport in sight. So we're gonna do first notch of flaps over here. And I might do, do the second one. Okay, and we're almost at the at the final approach fix. Yeah, I know. I was just try I was just trying to say like to show you how frustrated I get when I learn new airplanes. So it's not like I don't I don't I don't always just pick up and go like I'm just like I don't know what the hell I'm doing sometimes so this is me for my first time landing it there's the there's the runway so you guys will get to see get to see how I'm doing so second notch we'll do gear down now so that way we can we can get ready there's the gear gears coming down <laughs> doesn't <laughs> doesn't know doesn't need to know. I uh, want someone make B B fifty two. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, there it is. So now let's turn to final. Let's turn to final. So now let's see if the autopilot's gonna it's gonna capture that. So let's see if it's gonna capture that. So there it is. I think it's supposed to. 
Okay, so most likely, most likely won't. So let's let's capture it. Let's capture it first. Okay, so we're at 3,700. I think we're below glide slope for now. Okay, so third notch of flaps. Okay, I think we're on the glide slope now, somewhat. There it is. Apply power, apply more power. There's the run. We I will do a visual this time. I don't think I don't think ILS sort of works. Because it still shows that we're off 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 center, so can we even do Can we do this? Uh, I guess we need to Yeah, Pasadka. Uh, then we do Zahwat and Afternoon the machine. Hopefully that's gonna work, but that doesn't really work, so uh, none of that some tonight, just free flying. Yeah, yeah, so we're testing this bird, man. I can't go on that some of this, they'll kick me out. <laughs> They'll be like, what are you doing, man? You like you don't know how to fly this thing? Okay, so flaps full and we're about to land in Key of Bristol, so let's uh, let's record this. Yeah, we'll record that. There we go, so now we're recording it. So now let's let's position ourselves. So three thousand six hundred. At long, we need to be... Yeah, okay, got it. So we're making this a visual approach, really. There we go. Established visual, 3.6 three, six, uh, three, six left. So keeping that the VRF at 259 because we're at 450 tons, so we need to be at at the uh, at 259 kilometers an hour for for the airspeed. So now we we just need to capture that puppies because I think we're still a little bit too high. So I'm just just correcting it now. We're, we're sinking a bit, right? So at 2,000... Actually, we're at 1,000 feet per minute. Yeah, still a little bit too high, so just... Could just Now we'll see if Diamond Pilot can land military aircraft. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, this is a civilian aircraft, but it's like a... It's, it's a cargo... Big cargo plane, right? So hopefully we can... Hopefully we can do it. So there it is on final. Oh, jeez. This is... It's not easy. Be maintaining the V-Ref. Still just a little bit too high, that's fine. We're gonna... Okay, so she says Vosata Trista means altitude 300. Perfect, so I think we're good on puppies. Alright, just a bit, a bit of correction on the right, perfect puppies are great, to, to red to white, 150. Stop. 100. Okay, in the middle marker, 60. I'm not sure if, if there's reversers on this. I don't hear any reversers. But let's see. Yeah, let's do manual braking. I think we got enough uh, stopping power with those brakes. So we'll, I think we need... Yeah, I think we landed it properly. For the first time. Look at that. 
Ramsey's like, I told you, Alex, that's hilarious. All right, here we go. Let's just exit from here and we'll watch the replay in momentarily. Let's just hit those brakes and we're now gonna retract the flaps and exit out of here. All right, Steven, thanks a lot for the, for, for the applause. And William, thank you, appreciate it. All right, let's get the flaps up. Actually, no, we're gonna watch the replay in a second. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna park it over here, and then we'll watch the replay. See, see how we did. Um, this way, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna actually watch what I did there. And you guys can rate, you guys can rate it uh, zero out of ten. So if, if uh, Scott's still here, he's going to probably give us a zero. All right, here we go. Let me just stop right here. Okay, fine. I'm just going to turn a bit and then we'll stop. And then we'll go back and watch the replay. Okay, great. So let's watch the replay. So I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to load the situation. And let's load it up. And... Okay, so now it's gonna now it's gonna re restart it to where we where we were. Let's do the plate. Here we go. Here's here's us landing it. So so we're gonna do this like this view right here and gonna watch it land. So here we go. Here's 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 us correcting it. And by let let me know if you want me to do these uh, recordings. When we're gonna fly the Vatsim flights, because I'm not sure if you guys wanna wanna do that too. We can see the replay, and I think I even, I even had the replay thing over here. There, there you go. Oh, I just gotta move it. Oops. Um, let me lock that. See if I can move that replay. Oh my God, Felipe! Thank you so much for. For subscribing to the YouTube channel, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, here I just moved this replay. So just so you know, like I'm not actually flying it right now. That it's a replay, because you may think that what, what am I? I'm probably cheating, right? <laughs> Felipe, I appreciate subscribing to YouTube channel. Thank you so much, guys. You know, if you subscribe to YouTube, that that just makes me smile, because I I need to grow that thing, because I'm at uh, at what like almost 9,000 in, in Instagram, 14,000 on TikTok, and only 700 on, on YouTube. So I want to post a lot of good videos there and thanks a lot for your support here. All right, here we go. Here's so we're coming in and it's full flaps. I'm gonna just fast forward it a little bit so that way. Aaron, Mexico, thank you so much. Mexico, gracias amigo, welcome. All right, so here, and now let's watch. Yeah, 300. And yeah, so this is Kiev for Ukraine. 60. I guess 50. And I, I don't think she does the call outs further. So she says 60 sat means 60. And here we go. We flared, 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 flared. And there we go. I think that was all right. I think that was all right. So how, how do they handle a heavy hung of junk? <laughs> No, 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 it's, it, it's, it, I wouldn't call it a junk, it's such an awesome aircraft, to be honest. It's, it handles amazingly well. Okay, so let's, let's take a look, like, if we were in, uh, in the airport, if we were standing in the runway, we can, we can kind of see it. So let's, let's do that. Let's take a look how, how that looks. Okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna kind of fly around here. Beautiful landings. <laughs> okay, here. Okay, so that's five out of five. Nice. Okay, here we go. Nice. I think that that was okay, right? I think that was fine. So 10 out of 10. Wow, you guys are so generous. Uh, I think. Okay, so maybe for the first time, I guess it, it should be okay. So let's let's take a look from from this angle. 
Okay, so let's say if we were standing here. Butter, nice. If only was, if Scott was here. I know, right? If Scott was here, this would have been like... I don't know, man. This would have been like zero for sure. He would find some excuse to give us zero. Okay, here. All right, so... Oh, look at look how like huge it is. It just feels so huge. What she said. <laughs> Zero out of ten with Scott. <laughs> but I love how you how you said like Scott with the with the you know <laughs> with the lowercase. <laughs> at least you get something like that. Yeah, okay, here. Let's Yeah, that should be... I'm just trying to, to make some footage for the reels. Because I think, uh, you know, it should be a nice reel, actually. So let's see if uh, you guys get to be in the reel. So we can, we can create, like, a little short. Okay, what's going on? Where is it? Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, we'll just go play through it. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So I think we've we've did our cargo mission. Here we go. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Kiev Borispol Airport. As we landed here, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna taxi and just you know shut down and and unload those helicopters because we got a lots of lots of uh, well three helicopters I think inside as our cargo mission. There we go. All right, so let's just stop that and then we'll do the real life. Okay, now I'm just gonna turn. Yeah, one thing is with this replay, you can just do like real life, right? So you can you can interrupt it at any time and you can just, just uh, take control. It's really cool. How to use replay? That's great. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the replay tool, a flight control replay. So that's by uh, I think Fabio. Fabio is the guy that did it. It's really cool. Um, so send me a message. I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll show it to you. Where to buy it? It's it's like totally worth it. Okay, here we go. Let's now let's taxi. <laughs> let's uh, let's learn how to taxi this thing because this thing is so hard to taxi. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's supply some power. Yeah, we can turn off the fans, right? I think we we got enough sweat. So there we go. Let's turn them off, and then we'll turn off this one as well. Wait, the fan on this side is actually here right. is that the one yeah there it is I just turned it off nice I love these fans so so this is such a like a made by Fabio yeah but it's Zelensky approved <laughs> yes that's right so one thing that we got to do is we got to turn off the, the the strobe lights so that's the right here yeah we got the beacon on still because the engines are running yeah we just need to figure out where to park and we don't want to clip the wings uh, with those towers so let's see where we can park how about we take yeah we'll probably take this spot over here We'll just do a bit of a turn. 
see the airplane is so big we don't want to like knock out any light posts here because yeah I, I so care about those light posts okay let's let's start turning now and we'll probably we'll probably use this this spot right here Oh wow, it's like super hard to park. This thing is like, it's like so fat. <laughs> oh jeez. Okay, not too shabby. We'll just request the pushback afterwards. Yeah, okay, that works. I guess that works. That's proper parking. I still want to see in Vatsim and 225 Bloomington helicopters too. Yeah, what are we delivering them to? Howie, this is a beast, huh? Yep, totally. Here we go, you can hear those engines shutting down. There we go, beauty, isn't she? And I'm trying to see, trying to get the okay. So this, and then there we go. There she is, all landed in Kiev. And we are alive. Like one thing is we need to turn off the lights, the taxi lights. Yeah. There we go. So taxi lights are off now. All right, there she is. Uh, what I like about this this plane is that it, it it looks like a pair in front. It's very cute. Looks like a pair. <laughs> and there we go. So let's unload those. Oh, I guess let's crawl through the grass and let's unload those uh, those helicopters. There we go. And let's go ahead and do that uh, on the ground. I will just and then we'll do the. There we go. Nice and slow. And of course, uh, you guys been flying with us in the cabin. You guys need to get out through this door over here. There you go. So let's let's take a look inside. Let's take a look inside. I'm just gonna make this quicker so these are our helicopters these are our helicopters so we got the we got the mission yeah now no, it's like to be on our knees yeah we got three helicopters that we've delivered and of course uh, i think okay let's see how do you get into the cabin actually because that's been always my kind of biggest mystery so i understand that we you know here's the door right it's it's opening and there's the tug but how do you guys get to your cabin? Is there some kind of a ladder that you need to climb? Okay, so maybe not. Let's see. Um, yes, there is. Look at that. There is a ladder. Yeah, that's it. There's the ladder. <laughs> yes. So... So in order to get out of here, you gotta climb the ladder. Let's see. So the ladder takes you. Yeah, it takes you here. Look at that. Oh yeah, there it is. So that's the ladder you take. And then, yeah, the ladder. Yeah, there we go. So, and then there we go. So that's 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 where you guys were sitting. Oops. 
Yeah, this is uh, this says пользоваться кислородом means uh, use oxygen. Не курить means no smoking. Okay, there's another another seat here. And of course there's a phone. So you only have a phone and nothing else, no other entertainment. So of course uh ever was no smoking, no no putting garbage. You got a little sink over here, I think, right? Yeah, there's a sink. Is there is there a lavatory? So let's see. Yeah, there isn't. So probably there's a lavatory here. There has to be one. Or it might be here. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's the lavatory. So let's see if we can go inside. No, we can't. So I guess it, it's occupied. So there's only one lav, and then there's the yeah, garderobe. That's the coat room, and then that's the exit. So, and that's I guess this is where they keep all the stuff, like I guess all the food and everything. And then that's the that's the cockpit. Cockpit. So once again, check this out. Two pilots. Navigator, radio engineer, and two engineers. One engineer is handling the uh, the fuel system, and the other one is handling the electrical system. So you got electrical system, you got your uh, you know the the engine engineer uh, that's handling the APU, fuel system, and engines, and then here's the electrical engineer. Oh my God, so many folks, right? And this is the captain and the first officer sit here. And of course, they don't really have that much control, right? Because this is our radios. This is the... Uh, that's our sort of like annunciator panel. Lights, right? Uh, as we've discovered. Uh, this this over here is more like the lightning, right? Lightning system. Then, of course, your all of your main controls. Yoke, pedals, throttles. The same thing as always. The trims. And then... And then, yeah, you're iPad so you can play games. Really hope they put new system next and can get rid of half of the flight deck. Crew. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm pretty sure the next one is going to be all modern avionics. But I think the beauty of this aircraft is this is this specifically. And yeah, look at those couches and also beds, right? And 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 I think the beauty here is is to have these engineering like uh, stations, right? That's the, I think that's the beauty of this aircraft. Uh, that way you have the whole crew, right? And you have a lot more control over over engines and critical components and critical systems. And of course, there's I think that's a storm scope, most likely, right? So this this looks like a storm scope. Um, yeah, I think that's a storm scope. And then and then yeah, this is this is all of the radio navigations, right? So he's got his own radio systems. So this is this is mainly. Uh, the I think the the, v, the VHF right so uh, these are like ADFs and stuff like that these are mostly ILS right so that's that's uh, I think that's UHF right so or VHF nav radios yeah VHF nav radios so so yeah and then I'm not even sure what that is Grutch. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so I guess, yeah. You have the selector for VOR, DME, RSBN, PPM, navigation, and then that is the end. So, so a lot of the Soviet Union-based navigation systems. So, because we're using VO, like we're not even going to be using VOR soon. VORs are phasing out, right? So, a lot of this navigation stuff is not gonna not gonna be used other than your GNS as well as the, the ILS systems. So and that's another control, right? So that's your, I guess we'll, we're, we're, we're gonna turn off the, the radio systems. There we go. So that's that's it folks. And look at that. So now the, our main, um, oh yeah, it's still opening because right now we're using these hydraulic, hy hydraulic systems, right? To to make sure that aircraft is stationary. So see, it, it takes time for it to go, and then, and then we're gonna have to wait until this this ramp is gonna open. So here we go. So Nan needs to come down, this hydraulic press. Is it even moving? I think it, sh it should be moving.
Yeah, it is moving, but it's moving very slowly. So... But it needs to support the aircraft because you don't want to put push a lot of uh, strain on the on the landing gear. And look at the, how nice the textures are. So nice. It looks so realistic. And they've done such an amazing job. Wow. Yeah, varnished wood desks, just like the 747, exactly. So yeah, we're just gonna wait for that to finish. All right, Team Red, 15. Team Blue, 14. Thanks so much, everyone, for your support. Okay, so uh, let's see. So, by the way, I noticed another thing. So when you're in an aircraft uh, and you're doing the... Uh, like, you're, you're actually lowering it down with the hydraulics, it actually tends to lower your, your spot. So if you, if you find yourself, like, kind of you're, like, standing, that's because of your relations to the ground, uh, to the view, versus the, you know versus the airplane's vertical position. So I think they're going to fix that. I think it's more like a bug. Well, thank you for a wonderful stream. <laughs> Why are you calling me Zelensky? That's hilarious. All right, so kneel. Yeah, so this is the kneeling system. So it's still it's still lowering. Right, so it's going to take take a while. There it is. It's, it's going to take a while to, to, to kneel. There it is. Oh, I, th I think... Oh, you know what it's doing? It's actually not lowering this. It actually lowers this. So see how it kneels the... the Yeah, so so notice the landing gear. So it's, it, it, it's actually kneeling the aircraft down. So it kneels the aircraft with its actuators. So I think they should, they should uh, animate the actuators here. Because that's what would... would would make the the landing gear kind of kneel right so so it's it's kneeling kneeling down yeah bows down nice that is so cool i didn't even realize that so when it kneels down and sets on the ground then this ramp will open so that's when the captain usually goes for a smoke or something like that right I don't know, waiting for that to happen is quite a long time. And yeah, so that's why the landing gear is spinning, because it actually moves the aircraft forward a little bit. But the funny thing is, it's... Well, it's mo it moves the landing gear, but it doesn't move the aircraft. So, okay, let's wait until it, until it touches down. can change the time yeah you can make it go faster no no we got to make it realistic i just want to i just want to know you guys with this i'm <laughs> just kidding no no i know i know i'm just uh i just enjoy the the realism it's all about ultra realism while it while we do that it's gonna open up the bubbly <laughs> Ooh, cheers Yeah, almost there. We're almost there. So it's going to lower it now to the ground. I wonder how any builds got all this. Maybe the the Antonov sent them all of the all of the schematics. Now that would have been really cool. So I guess they have some kind of an agreement with them and they just sent them all of the all of the blueprints for this because the aircraft is destroyed, so they might as well do that. <laughs> That's right. All right, so here it is. It's going to touch the ground, and as soon as it's going to do that, we're going to hear the hydraulic systems. <clears throat> uh, that will extend the ramp so we can uh, unload... Perfect, so there it is, it's on the ground now. And then we'll start hearing the ramp coming down. Okay, there's the ramp. I guess the, the sound will kick in shortly, but the ramp is coming down. Ha <laughs> ha! 
That is so cool. I, I just gotta love this. So Alex says, those machines were made to fly after world nuclear war. No GPS, no navigation, nothing. Also, no onboard, onboard electrical devices will be affected by EMP because it's so analog. Actually, this one's got a lot of electrical systems because of the navigation, but you're right. The EMP blast would definitely knock out the electrics. And a lot of sort of analog gauges will help out with that, right? Amazing. Drink, drink. Yeah, see, I got a, I got a cold coffee here. And then they just realized it's nighttime and it's 1042. I'm going to sleep soon. Why did I, why did I do this? That's it. All right, so here we go. It opens up the the gate. I think it does unload, right? Um, no, it's not gonna unload, but but we'll see the the ramp kind of go down. I, w I really want to see what the what the ramp looks like. We did see it at the beginning, but I'm gonna see it again. Beautiful. Almost there. Almost there. You should have timed it. Yeah, it, I think it takes 10 minutes. <laughs> but I so want to see it, it finish. So mesmerizing. Antonov came here to Mirabelle, I believe, month before it was destroyed. Discovered COVID medical... Oh, delivered delivered COVID medical supplies. That's amazing, man. So, yeah, Jean, I told you, right? I saw the Maria in September 2021. So, also months before it, it, just, it got destroyed. But that's amazing that I went to Mirabelle. That's awesome. Montreal. 10, man. It's been 10. Yeah, 10, 10 minutes. I think it takes 10 minutes, yeah, to, to do this. So another cool thing is that it, it's got its own crane. If you take a look. Now if you go here, you will see the crane. See this crane? So it's got its own crane system that, that it's on rails. So you see these rails. And it just it it slides on the rails. And then it uses the crane to kinda to do this. But I guess these helicopters can just be wheeled out. So you can just wheel them out. Yeah, it will be easier. So you just got to unlatch these, these tie downs over here. And once you unlatch it, you'll be able to just wheel them out. Uh, you don't need a crane. But for crane, uh, you probably need to have a different load, right? Different cargo load. But it, it definitely felt a lot like really heavy, right? Alex says it's all about nanometers. Less you go, more effect, uh, it affected by EMPs. This is why all space critical computers are 90 plus nanometers. This is the limit for space electronics. Same goes for aviation computers. Oh, really interesting. Yeah, 3080 Ti is 8 nanometers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, like my processor, I think it's 4 nanometers, right? So. Oh, there it is. It's still extending. So we're almost there. Almost there. All right, Brent. Thanks a lot for the like, man. Thank you. Here we go. Looks like scene from James Bond, Mission Impossible movie, yeah, right? <laughs> Here you go, look at that beautiful ramp. Awesome. All right, guys, well, this was fun stream. I appreciate everyone supporting me on YouTube, by the way, and I thank all of my new supporters there and subscribers. 
you know, Facebook's been kind of weird lately, so I appreciate your, your support there. And Alex, uh, we got to talk about that balloon flight because we got we to gotta do that, that balloon. Balloon stream, so let me know if you're, if you're, up, for, if you're up for it. And here it is. Uh, once again, thanks for flying today. Uh, thanks for being with us today. We're just parked here at... <laughs> You're welcome so many time for all. <laughs> thanks, Ramsey. Appreciate it. Ramsey's another streamer. He's a triple racer, triple seven. Uh, make sure you hit follow on his Facebook. Uh, he's also follows all of the procedures. So make sure you guys do that. Support him. Great guy, Ramsey. I want to see if he if he shows up to, to the FS Expo. Uh, so, I, by the way, I'm going to FS Expo. So, this is the Flight Simulator Conference. I might be actually, I might, I'm thinking to present there. Maybe I, like, I can present a bit of my story. I don't know. Should I? What do you guys think? Alex says, it's up to you. You're a busy dad. Anytime for me. Awesome. Yeah, man. It's been, it's, it's been crazy. But Anastasia is doing so much better than me. I'm, I'm kind of like, I feel bad sometimes that I'm not doing enough. So, yeah, here we go. This is the terminal for Kiev Burispil International. We just landed in, in the 36 left, uh, the, the runway 36 left. And we're going to do some flights here as well um, out of out of Kiev. So watch out for more streams as we're going to um, you know do some more flights. Uh, with Phoenix, with 737. Okay, here's here's a really good view of... of uh, oh, I forgot to remove the replay. Sorry. Yeah, here's here's the here's the Kiev. Kiev was over there. Beautiful sunset. Woo, thank you. All right. Thanks guys. I'll see you soon. Great flying with you. Thanks so much for support. You guys are still watching. That's awesome. Usually people drop off at this phase uh, when I start blob blobbing and saying bye. All right, but anyways, thanks guys. So appreciate your support and I'll see you soon. Um most likely, I'm not sure, maybe Thursday, maybe but most likely will be weekend. So I want to do some European flights. So see you soon. Cheers. Bye bye. Good night. Good night, guys. Keys. Thanks, man. Good night. Appreciate the su subs. Thank you so much for subscribing to the, the YouTube channel. You guys are the best. Thank you. And have a great evening and see you soon. Yeah. Okay. So who won? I think Team Red won. Look, look, look. Team Red. 14 versus 4. Team Red wins. So YouTube is winning. So thank you. Thank you guys for sticking around in YouTube and YouTube's best quality. Okay, I, I, I talk too much. Okay, I'll